Starting it off with a nice little fresh crack. Uh, we're going to kick it off with the Bears. I think we would be a little remiss to not start off with our boy, kind of Trey Burton, and be in, in the underreaction, overreaction kind of show that we're doing today here. So let's kick it off with, with Trey Burton. Obviously only having one catch on the day uh, for minuscule amount of yards here. What, what 15. We, for 15, 15 yards. 15 whopping yards from Trey Burton, week one. But – Marked down with six targets on uh, on CBS and ESPN and Roto Worlds. So underreact, overreact, properly react. Got, Are got you him. dropping this guy? You got to drop him, right? <laughs> for sure. Ship One him week he didn't do anything for me. Ship him out of here. Right. The casual redraft player mentality. Right. For most people that play Dynasty, I Look, guess. There were several tight ends that didn't do well this week, right? I mean, several guys caught one ball. Say his name. Travis Kelsey there caught one ball. They're comparable. Kyle Rudolph caught one ball, happened to be for a touchdown. Right. Jimmy Graham caught two for eight. Yeah. Well, uh, Greg Olson busts his foot up. Greg Kyle Olson. Rudolph would have been a goose egg if he hadn't caught one touchdown for right. one catch. Yeah. But if he started Will Disley, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Jared Cook has 88 fantasy points by himself. Right. In in the first quarter, I think. Yeah. So tight ends were crazy this week. But uh, and yes. And they're, they're crazy every week. They're like always ASJ crazy. ASJ yes. looks terrible because he got a touchdown called back. Like he didn't do anything. That was a touchdown. Oh, drain me. on the, That's what I told Casey. I said, that's going to make. Right up soon as the game was done, ASJ had three for. 20 yards or something yeah not five something. points right and it's just like he looks like a bum but he called it he does does what asj does he catches a touchdown and there's a flag right it you know it just or it's, you know the last year the catch rule got him a couple times like he got a touchdown he went from having 15 points to five points yeah. just like that and but so trey burton so yeah. i want to properly react which is understand what happened the bears got out to a fantastic awesome early lead if you're a bears fan and then they went in super conservative mode didn't know what to do to finish the game out and aaron Rodgers started doing aaron Rodgers things and they were just complete you could just feel it right away as soon as that first touchdown happened and you could just how in the world can we not lose this game all add all that up we said this in the offseason like mitchell trubisky played minimal to be a to be a first to be a top 10 draft pick as a quarterback and play one season basically as a starter is not normal. He played minimal at North Carolina, played well, played one good, played one, really one season at North Carolina, got him a first round draft pick, right. played a decent amount of the season last year, considering he wasn't supposed to play under John Fox, under John Fox with zero creative creativity comes in with his brand new offense. These shiny toys doesn't play in the preseason hardly with any of these guys. Only a couple quarters there with Jerry Burton and made and him and Trey Burton made Magic. Made wonderful magic in the preseason. We had a dance for, party. We about had it. A, we had a party about it. <laughs> so my, my my proper reaction on Trey Burton is just that is he got the second most targets on the team, and they it, it really did feel like he was it, even even getting the second most targets on the team. He felt like it was a forgotten situation, and the first drive of the game was the coming out party for the Chicago Bears offense. It was really awesome. And they wanted to show off their bells and whistles. They wanted to show you Tyreek Hill. They wanted to show you Tyreek Cohen. Tariq, my, my bad. Yes. Tariq, good catch. They wanted to show you Tariq Cohen, and they wanted to get the defense off balance, and it happened, and it worked. They went straight down the field, scored a touchdown. Look, look, they went straight down the field multiple times. Look unstoppable, right? For yeah. minimal practice reps, the whole this whole situation, basically everybody outside of New England took the preseason off. And for, I, for me, I've... Obviously, what I'd love to see in Trey Burton come out here and catch eight for a hundred in a touch. Heck yeah, I would have. Didn't happen, but I'm not. I'm 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 up, I'm, I'm down about it. I'm upset, right. but I'm not mad at Trey Burton about it, and I'm not. Sure. I'm certainly not going to devalue him, and certainly wouldn't sell him for ninety nine percent of what I was sold him for the day yeah. before the game. I was reading some redraft comments on the one of the big guys Twitter feeds for redraft stuff, and people were legitimately asking if they should drop Trey Burton. Yeah which obviously in redraft don't drop Trey Burton and in dynasty, hopefully you weren't even thinking about that. Um, and you don't, I wouldn't even think about benching him. If you, if you have 
other options that seem like they're great. Maybe Kittle crush it for you, and you had Kittle and and Burton. I, if you wanted to play Kittle next week, I couldn't be upset with you. Uh, but this is one of the reasons why I'm a tight end punter for the most part. Like this is what happens with tight ends. Yes. It goes up and down. Like even like. Ertz and Kelsey and Gronk. Obviously, Gronk is getting his, and nobody had any doubts about that because of the situation for the Patriots. By the way, Tom Brady played every snap in the preseason. Right. Um, <laughs> Not quite, but yeah, most right. of them. So, and then you got on top of that, you got, to, again, the, the the Mitchell Trubisky factor. He's 23 of 35, 171 yards. He's just he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready for he's not quite ready for the big time. He didn't come out there. He he you, you could tell that he was thinking about it a little too much. I liked what they were doing in some cases and, and uh, they were using his athleticism and he was using his athleticism to not, not make it so hard on him. And I think that's a big part of what they need to do moving forward. But in big spots when they needed to do things, he just you could he was rattled. He oh, just, it was Sunday night football right. at Lambeau and the big- Bears winning at right up early that's what so, i'm saying I mean, it's almost more pressure to be ahead than behind i mean he's no hall of famer sam darnold but we'll get to that <laughs> conversation later yeah. but i mean i think that i think there's no reason to overreact with what trey burton uh did on the field i think there's a nice bounce back happening i think he'll end up with a nice season like you said second most targeted player on the team um so i no reason to panic here with trey burton i wouldn't panic all right, well, let's move along to the Bears' backfield. We'll get off Burton for a second, take it to what this backfield did. Uh, looking at the stat line, Jordan Howard, five for five catches. Right, watching the game, you saw him snag plenty of handsy catches. It's crazy. Five balls caught in your face. Five <laughs> five balls thrown, five balls caught. Most of them handsy catches. It's, How, like, he, it's like he has two hands. There's no way he did that, though. It's crazy. It's probably like it didn't even happen. He uh, can't even catch a cold. He could not. <laughs> Catch it cold. It was so funny. Stop that this. The the announcers were like, he's really using his hands out there. It's like, well, he's not going to catch it with his teeth. He might not be running routes from the slot, but he can catch balls. Right. And he did have a high drop rate last year, one of the worst in the in the league. Some of those weren't his fault. He came out here. He made plenty of handsy catches while whilst moving in a right. lot of them <laughs> and putting a move on somebody else. So I was super excited to see that. I just like shoving that in people's faces. Like sure. a lot of these running backs can catch if they just give them a little bit of practice, throwing it to them, they'll be all right. Well, that's what Jordan Howard did right. in the off season. He said, I'm going to catch passes every day after practice because I, I want a chance to catch these. Passes. I don't want to come off the field. And I want a chance to do this. I, I don't want it just to be the Tariq Cohen show when it comes to running backs, catching balls around here in third downs. And he put the work in and it worked out week one. So highlight speaking of Tariq Cohen. Well, no, hot first okay. uh, highlighting Jordan Howard's hands and then go into what he does and how he does it. I thought he was <laughs> let him do what he does. Cause when I he thought does he it, was he's doing it. fantastic in the run game. He looked as advertised out there. It's nice to see him. We mentioned, well, I think the week before this uh, season started, it's nice to see him finally getting some respect. And I thought in this situation where they were actually having a positive game script, where everyone wasn't worried about Jordan Howard running straight at them, where they had to worry about a little bit of something else. Like Jordan Howard looked awesome. There was plenty of runs where he looked like a pretty elite NFL running back. Does he have the best speed? No. Does he have the best anything? No, not really. But he gets the job done and he does it week in, week out. And you can give him a good offense like we've been saying, like this offense is figured to be where you don't know where it's coming from and it's not just he, nine guys in the box and pounding might, with Jordan Howard. He's top tier vision, no doubt about it. And as far as, yeah, he's not the fastest, he's not the shiftiest, but he is very efficient with his movements for a big man. And what I, you got, like you said, now you, for the first time in two years, Jordan Howard is freed up from nine men in the box and everybody knowing they're going to run it. He gets only 15 carries, goes for 82 yards, average five and a half. So there's your average, everybody. And five for five on catches. Right, exactly. And what I really liked about it is even when the game got tight at the end, and then, really, in the situations where the Packers really felt like they were about to run it, Jordan Howard rips off two 10-yard yeah. runs in a row. And he's like, I feel at home now because that, the defense was all looking at me, and I did it anyway. Like right. he, he really does the best work under pressure when the defense wants to – basically knows Jordan Howard's about to get the ball. So – there's a lot of good if you got a if you got Jordan Howard stock right now, you're not looking at it with eighty two yards and no rushing touchdowns. You're looking at it like he's got eighty two yards, five more catches, 
and another seven PPR points on top of my rushing total and no touchdowns yet. And he just right. got me 15. Sure. So that, you know, any, any given Sunday, he rumbles into the end zone twice and you got a 25, 28 point game on your hands. He might not catch five every week, but now he's just done it. And he's not that, oh, he only got me 82 yards. That's 8.2 points. Right. That's what everybody was worried about. Yeah, it's exactly. okay. We got two yards in a cloud of dust for 80 yards, and I can't even start him because it's only eight points. Right. That's There you go. He got There's you 15, to without be had. 15 PPR points without a touchdown. And he looked damn good catching him. Yeah, he did. All right. So let's move on to the other guy in this backfield. There's obviously really no buying low or anything with Jordan Howard. If you wanted to sell high because you're a Jordan Howard hater, I guess go ahead. Probably didn't already have him on your team if right. that was the case. So Tariq Cohen had a... Can't be any good. Had a marginal game at best here. Average five yards of carry. 5.5. 5. Um, let's see how the room feels about Tyreek Cohen. You you guys buying, selling, overreacting, underreacting. What do you, what do you like with, with Cohen here? <clears throat> Well, I mean, you didn't see anything out of him in the preseason. You literally, you didn't see hardly anything. And, uh, like, we've already talked about that on the Bears in general. They didn't show you a ton at all. They didn't, Allen Robinson didn't play a single snap. So they're just getting going here. Right. And to see him, you know, I mean, he caught three or four balls and had five carries. I don't know that he's going to get too many more touches than that. But Aaron Rodgers came storming back in this game. And I think that... I think that it was encouraging. I mean, obviously, you want to see more from him, but he's he's a, well, yeah. a, a shoestring tackle away from busting big playoff. They were they were in a game script. They were in a situation where it doesn't lend to what Cohen is doing for this team. They're in a situation where they're trying to hold this lead and let's keep Jordan Howard on the field and let's not. We don't need to do a whole bunch of crazy stuff with Cohen right now. Right, but to build that lead, Cohen was an integral right. part in doing right. it. Right, yeah, he he was out there. They were holding on for dear life. And that at the very yeah right, for it, more for the whole second half, right? Well, exactly. It, you, it really wasn't going to go good for Cohen either way. Once they were up twenty something to nothing, you know what I mean? Or seven, mm-hmm. that first seven, that first half up seventeen zero is absolutely remarkable. The Bears are going crazy, you know. It was, but let's not lose the fact that Tariq Cohen's, I don't want to call it gimmicky stuff, but they it, it, you can't. That's the speed and the and the breakaway ability that he has stretching the defense in addition to everything else that the Bears have going on because that's what we were talking about in the offseason. That's what we meant by Nagy and the system and they paid first first day of free agency they paid Burton. They bring in Allen Robinson. They trade up and get Anthony Miller. Like that's this is what you were looking for X's and O's wise and it was just like you said Trubisky wasn't ready. Maybe the whole team wasn't ready. They had the big Khalil Mack uplift they got you know the defensive touchdowns to get going they 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 got all that going but were they ready this is a super you this a young team a young unit like were they ready to be up big early on the packers on the road yeah they weren't ready for that but that's is you know Tariq cohen moving forward you have to like what you saw but yeah only five carries and only four targets caught three of them the usage wasn't crazy but the second half of the game didn't lend to it him at all Right, and the and the usage wasn't crazy, and so the bottom line is for me is like I'd be going out and trying to find someone who wasn't happy with Tariq Cohen, and I'd be more than willing to give up something to try and get him on my team. Like this is, I feel like it's a solid buy low opportunity because you yeah you hear these Tariq uh, Hill comparisons, and you expect all this from this Bears offense, and everybody loves Trubisky, and it didn't work out for him in the stat sheet per se. It didn't quite get you ten points. I'd be down to go and uh, and try and. Put out some feelers for Tariq yeah. I'm Cohen. definitely looking to send out feelers for Cohen as well. I, I, I think there was already some low. The stock was dropping a little bit from the preseason and and lack of usage. I don't know how much he showed you in this game. At least the Cohen owner, who may or may not be kind of indifferent on him, and they picked him because maybe they thought he was the value in the round or whatever. Um, maybe isn't super excited about the Bears going forward or Cohen's role going forward. So I would definitely be. Um, throwing some stuff out there for him well that's that's the part of the question here is i would really be interested if what to see what kind of work maybe jay wayne puts in this week as his fillers what it what it looks like because i can see uh, casey and i have treat Cohen on one team it is a short bench league and when you start thinking about all these weapons 
and a potential start ability, you might be able to, like Casey gets on me a lot of times about being like, remember that even in the season, you are playing a week-to-week game, but when you're in Dynasty, it's you like a player for his talent and his ability. And in this scheme, and the X's and O's, and the the, the correlation between Tariq Cohen and the potential of, for the Tyreek Hill usage is there. Do we get the same player? Obviously, it's, Tariq Cohen would have to go a long way to become what Tyreek Hill, God status he is right now. I get that. But yet, yeah, this I can see where the owner of Tariq Cohen is waffling because I'm a little bit indifferent on myself about his potential startability in the next week or three just going forward. And just if until like this Bears team has a ways to go to be rocking and rolling like the you know Chiefs were last year with a veteran you know master game planner and and not turnover in Alex Smith and then you got the the next coming of Brett right. Favre going in this year in Mahomes so if while this team builds up to speed maybe even in the next week or two you might have this process of Tariq Cohen's coming you know it is and he, maybe his startability isn't that great in the next week or three exactly. but this is dynasty but it, but that we're talking about right, here exactly. and I have no remorse throwing out a second round pick to try and go get him okay, there you, you go. certainly sure. couldn't get that you could probably couldn't get him for that pre preseason. That's what me and Big Co got him for, and then he was more valuable all off season. And then near the end of the off season, it started going back down. Exactly. Um, so that's around what we were paying for him during all the hype. And now I feel like the hype is probably even further down because you weren't nobody was sure what was going to happen, and then he came out here and it wasn't great. Um, in the short bench, but it was great on that first drive. Right. And you could see what he can do. Right, and in the short bench league, I mean, I can understand. You know, you needed to, you need to have a bench of startable guys, and I can understand that. But the Bears are again are also in the preseason. We're seeing this with a lot of teams. A lot of teams. Was, they didn't even week three. They didn't even start pull their guys out there. Like this is a preseason, and I think on the late night game, uh, Mar, uh, Booger McFarlane uh, was was talking about how a lot of teams are okay with saying, all right, well, we're just going to get out of the preseason healthy, healthy yeah. and we're going to come in here. If maybe it costs us a game or two through September to get acclimated and get our offense rolling. You saw it with the Rams a little bit, especially in that first half of getting things going and getting in the flow of things and everybody busting uh, yeah. the rust off. Exactly. Um, so, you know, Cohen didn't play a whole lot in the preseason and neither did Trubisky and neither did a lot of these pieces on the offense. So we're kind of still in the preseason with a lot of these teams and their offense. So just, you know, don't get super discouraged with any of these players. Speaking of a guy you might have been discouraged with leading up to the the week one of the NFL season, Allen Robinson, who didn't play a, like, I don't think he played a single snap in the preseason comes in, gets seven targets, catches four of them for 61 yards. You got to be encouraged by what you saw from Allen Robinson, right? Yeah, we did a Allen Robinson, uh, whole breakdown, maybe last December that's out on YouTube to go, to go check out and just really breaking down what is so great about Allen Robinson. And in that time, like you just found out that how good he was at those 50 50 balls, how good his route running is like he's he's a very, very good player. This was a great pickup for the Bears. You saw him go up and grab one of those balls in a contested catch situation and snag it. He was the highest targeted player on the field for them. He just looked like he was the biggest, baddest dude on that team. Everyone was having trouble guarding him. I think if as this team goes and grows, I think his role will get better and better and he'll get plenty of red zone targets and that's where he is going to excel but he's also great in the middle of the field and he can run after the catch um i guess my biggest question is here is i know big co is not a big Allen robinson guy for for whatever reason and did week one on the field of really being the first time with trubisky in live game action change your opinion at all on what Allen robinson is uh let's just say dynasty sure well that was that my question is on obviously I hadn't seen Allen Robinson at all in the preseason so I was what well, there was a couple we did some redraft leagues together the three of us and every time Allen Robinson's name came up I was poo-pooing him rid of him I was just you know and then <laughs> well, redraft it was it, just so late that I thought I felt always felt like it was worth the right and 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 it's gonna it, it looks like you're gonna be proven to be absolutely right even in re, the because the value was there even in redraft but that's in obviously in, in dynasty Allen Robinson was younger is younger and he got some love a few years back but that was my thing because I was still hung up on what was who's the real Allen Robinson that 40 year that touchdown that year where Blake Bortles gets 40 touchdowns and Allen Robinson catapults himself into the top five of a dynasty startup or the next year when Marquise Lee's the best wide receiver on the team and then the next year Allen Robinson blows his knee in week one in the first quarter so I was still I didn't know 
And I don't know that I know right now, but I will say, like you said, after week one, just seeing him on the field healthy, he does look like a big, bad dude. And some of the things, like Taylor Gabriel caught five balls on five targets. Jordan Howard caught five balls on five targets. Tariq Cohen caught three balls on four targets. But those were all like Taylor Gabriel is the last thing the defense could even look at with everything going around. Taylor Gabriel's wide open out there. Jordan Howard, a couple of decent little balls in the flats here and there. Look as good catching them all easy completions like Allen Robinson's four for 60. Some of those were just nasty sideline routes and him look catches he, in traffic catches 50, 50 balls. That's what I'm saying. Like I, I do, I feel a lot better about Allen Robinson today, but to do it than I did before I saw him on the field. If you're not, you didn't watch him. Like you can't not like Allen Robinson more. I mean, maybe if you were just Allen Robinson lover and the truther and you were hung up on that first to season three years ago, you know, I, I I really did enjoy what I saw out of Allen Robinson. And for me, as a doubter going in, it was nice to see for sure. Would the court be willing to grant me a short bathroom break? <laughs> I could hold it, but then it might be hard to become aroused. <laughs> we'll be back. After a little liar, liar for you. We'll be back with more Married to the Game. All right. Everyone's... Uh bodily fluids have been taken care of <laughs> and we're ready to rock and roll you can catch us on twitter at the ff dynasty we're gonna keep this train rolling with uh, some jared cook are we holding or are we rigging the register anybody want to go first here this is a big reason why i'm a tight end punter because this is one of my favorite late round sure. targets and you know that happened you, obviously he could be in the exact same position that trey burton's in exactly la- well last you, week but would you, you Ring the register or holding on for dear life here. Well, you do have you got Jared Cook all over your dynasty rosters, and for that, sir, I tip a cap to you. You and I both drafted him a couple times in some FFPC leagues in the rookie draft in the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round this year. I say fourth, it wasn't, but I just most rookie drafts stop at four rounds. FFPC goes seven rounds, and then five into six rounds, we were dotting up our teams with Jared Cook. Feels really good to have him. Would I sell him or would I hold him? There's two different, obviously, there's plenty of ways to look at it. But for me, you got the guy that might, that had just lost Delaney Walker. And maybe he might have thought he was a contender. And he, Jared Cook might be a really nice plan B. And you might be able to really get some solid value out of him. On the other hand, they play the Broncos this week, which. I don't think of another defense in the league that's as that's basically a mirror image of the Rams, except for the 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 Broncos' defensive pressure is coming from Chubb and Von Miller on right. the outside of the lines, and the Rams are beating you up for Donald and Sue. And, and the Broncos' kryptonite for years or have been they don't the even tight, stick has the, been they the don't tight even end. play tight ends. So. Exactly, they don't even play tight ends. So I don't I don't have a problem if you can get what I would call like really. You don't have to have Max. Disley just cut you up. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to get max value for Jared Cook to move him. Not, out, coming off a nine for 180 game, you don't have to get max value. But if you don't get near retail price for him, he's about to have a chance to do the same thing right. this next week. And two in well, a row. That's what I thought you were driving would, at is maybe hold him and just get another good game out of for him. Me, and say, I, see, he, see, it wasn't a fluke. Exactly. Look at you know, look how you good he is. You have a chance here with Chris Harris or whoever about to man up Amari Cooper again. And a quick, that's this. It, it's, it's interesting to not know exactly what the Raiders' offense is yet because, first of all, they look really good in the first half against the Rams, but I think a lot of teams are going to have to get the ball out in one second against the Rams. Right. I think a lot of teams are going to show you that. Such a good front, and you're trying to avoid those those nothing, two corners. Exa- if nothing else, I think the Raiders just really put together a decent first-half diagram to do what they did. I mean, they really did play well against that pressure, it fell apart in the second half with some. Well, one, once the Rams started scoring and putting the pressure on exactly. on the on the uh, took, Raiders, there took a minute for the Rams to get right. in right. sync. They had played no, no preseason, preseason yeah. which so. is going to make the Rams nasty going forward when they get going on offense. And then you had to face that D line and those cornerbacks they brought in. Yeah, but for Jared Cook. He's got the same. He's basically got the same situation this week, and I think he's going to get peppered with targets again. Did the defense try to look for him? Maybe, but the Bron- like the Broncos don't even play. Disley just tore you up. Like the Broncos don't play yeah. defense against tight ends to begin with. I think I think the same game script comes in for the Raiders, and they hope that the you know that they're not going against that well old machine. It wasn't well old in the first half. I'll give you that, Jay Wayne. You're exactly right. But they're not going against the Rams and Gurley and all that stuff. They're going against the Broncos and three interceptions. Case Keenum. So I think it's a little bit. But three touchdowns. So so inevit- <laughs> so inevitably before before we get Jay Wayne's take on Cook, are you are you saying that you would? 
wait a week to sell or are you just are you just saying that's kind of like what you could do and you're you're trying to hold on to this guy like what do you what do you what, what, what do you think the real Jared Cook is I think he was tight end like seven last year exactly I think the real Jared Cook is one of the most athletic tight ends in the league we hated on this guy when he was a Packer and and multiple stops before that because of that he was super athletic and awesome and he's just never put it all together because maybe it was just the lack of wanting to be great and now it seems like he's putting together a really good team he also looks a little bit like Beetlejuice he does from the Howard Stern show Scarlet she's the resident Chiefs fan and she does not like all this Oakland Raiders talk yeah not a fan of the division like what about Tyreek Hill he just crushed it yeah she uh, wants to move forward answer the question Biko situationally how many teams outside of Gronk, Kelsey Ertz, feels good about their tight ends? Right. Jimmy Graham poo pooed to bed. Delaney Walker's out for the IR. Trey you know what I mean? Kyle Rudolph was. Uh, Kyle Rudolph caught one ball, just happened to be a touchdown. Whatever. We talk, we talk it's like that one catch one. game didn't happen. I got so a touchdown out of him. Can you. <laughs> That's true. Can you. If, if we're talking dynasty here, and Jared Cook has been a Jekyll and Hyde guy his entire career, up one week, down the next four. Pretty up, good last you year, know, though. But he did. He was super solid last year, and they got don't a lot. really have Just a wide receiver. The question. Three. Well, we, we don't really it's have situational. A, yeah, we don't really. They don't really have a wide receiver three. You just saw him bring he in. Is their wide right, receiver exactly. three? Exactly. This is why I was all over him all off season because he kind of is their wide receiver three. They just re-signed Martavis Bryant because they have nobody else. They right. were like, damn it. We so, don't have anybody else to bring us why <laughs> The first thing out of my mouth was almost, you got to get retail price. There is no, oh, well, Jared Cook sucked a lot. So what so. would be retail price, though, I guess? Like, I don't know. A first who, rounder? You, you're not you, going to get, nobody's going to give you I'm that. I'm not giving him up for a second rounder. Exactly. Why would you? Why All would, right, we're really getting somewhere yes. here, then. Dude got 12 targets, and he caught nine for 180, as that might be his best game of the season. But next next week he's going to get ten more targets and he might go. What if what if if it's just eight for a hundred, Bo? I'll take that all day. I'm not getting yeah, that. Yeah, even from if he doesn't else. have the same yardage, he could easily have a touchdown and balance out. Yeah, you know, right. sixty of those so, yards. Am I? No, I'm not selling unless somebody wants to give me a first round pick. And even then, I got to be like, am I title chasing? Does Jared Cook give me a chance to win a championship? Because. I, I like the Delaney Walker thing, though. That was a good... You could probably try Somebody's to, upset about Delaney Walker, and Jimmy Graham's got him questioning. Somebody, somebody, I sold some Jimmy Graham to a guy for a first-round pick who thinks he's a contender, and Jimmy Graham just got him nothing. Right, and and we know we know you're a habitual wheel and dealer. Anybody who's listened to this for long enough. So at but the right I'll, price, you'll sell anybody. But more than, but I will, but for more than I enjoy a trade, I enjoy being in the hunt for a championship. Sure. And I'm not afraid to. I'll I'll spend my first round pick before the trade deadline, even if I've already locked up the playoffs. Yeah, and it's, it's I mean it's too kind of it's too soon to really determine if you're a look, chasing or not. Right. For the most part, I mean you might be able to look at a roster or two and be like, eh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Jay Wayne. If if someone gave me a first round pick for Jared Cook, I I think I'd have to take that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was gonna come on here for for 15 minutes now. I've been like about to jump in and say that you can't sell trade uh, Jared Cook. But if someone's going to give you a first, yeah, you got you got to take. I that. think I'll take the first. You got to take that because you but can I'm package with, that up and get somebody better than Jared Cook. Right, and I'm with you. I'm not selling him for but a maybe second. Maybe there's maybe not that many people better than Jared Cook. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> and the he's all, really is, he's only 31 in tight that's, end. That's, that's I mean, I was, you, that's prime time. <laughs> <laughs> he's only 31. He yeah. had a great season last year with a poo poo Raiders offense with a. Derek Carr, who had a hurt back, and everyone just shit on them all all over the place, and he still had a all, 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 a pretty solid year. Yeah, stuttering here. Let me get it under control. I'm excited. You should just quit. So you know what you need to do with Jared Cook? <laughs> Put him in your lineup and win a championship. Right, definitely hold that dude. Out of, you know the old championship that you can win in week two. You know that championship. All right, <laughs> we've exhausted the Jordan uh, Jared Cook talk here. Um, let's move on to the Ravens. You guys want to talk a little Ravens? Let's do it. Go by Alex Collins. That's your take on the Ravens? Do it. To do kick, it now. To kick the Ravens talk off, that's what you're going with? Yeah. That's, just, that's the first word you'll hear on YouTube. Go by Alex <laughs> Collins. <laughs> All right. So we know where Jay stands on this. I mean, obviously, it was a blowout over there in uh, against Buffalo. So was, you didn't well, you didn't see like a ton of Alex blowouts. Collins and it was like two blowouts. Same game. They <laughs> blew him out yeah. twice. Blew him out in the first half, blew him back out in the second half. The, the first team blew him out and the second team. <laughs> yeah. So Collins fumbled. He did get in the end zone for you. Um He fumbled and they want and the Ravens don't handle that. They don't they 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 run a tight ship. So if you, they didn't if like you mess up, they're gonna punish you. 
and they're blowing out the Bills, and they got a short week coming back. Uh, they're on the road At versus Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Yep. So on the Thursday night, they're blowing this team out. Why would you? I I, I think it's just a brilliant move by them to limit Alex Collins's touches and save him for this short week because they're like you didn't need him in this game. You didn't need him to beat the Bills. Right. The Bills. He was a lot of people's favorites to just absolutely run wild against the Bills, but I don't think anybody saw them putting up the kind of performance that they did. Right. That had it been any kind of close, he probably would have got more work. Or this, even remotely close. Yeah. This well, Ravens office is on the up, obviously. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I can understand you being discouraged. He only got you like eight points, but whatever. It's going to happen. So he was kind of like a... There was you were either loving or hating Alex Collins. He fell into like kind of draft purgatory there, where like he was usually like sitting around and like you either loved him or you were passing on him. Um, so the people who have him right now are some people who maybe don't pay a, lot, a whole lot of attention, which a lot of dynasty owners don't go through and watch every game. They might watch look at some box scores and watch some highlights, true, and be upset true. about it. some podcasters do that too. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, if you're putting out a podcast Sunday night <laughs> or Monday, what what did you have time to? Actually, do any research? I mean, I don't mind the Monday, the Sunday night podcast. That's the instant. That's the fantasy point reaction show. I got no, I got no problem with somebody that wants to put out that podcast and the person that wants to listen to it because it may just be like I want to talk football with somebody right now. And yeah. I don't have anybody sure. sitting around to talk about it. So not everybody watches football with five people and five football screens. You know what I mean? So I got no problem with. We the do Sun- have it blessed over here. I got no problem with the Sunday night podcast er and the podcast e. I did, I have a problem with the Monday morning podcaster who pretends like he's seen everything. Right. That's, that's what I got a problem with. It's fair. I don't have a problem Circle with gets the, the, square. the good times <laughs> podcast. I don't have the people. I don't have a problem with the people having fun with it. All but right. If so you're going to try to pretend like you know everything on Monday morning. Two questions on don't. Alex Collins here. One, you just said you're buying. What you buy? You trying to get some Alex Collins here? I mean, I don't think you're getting too many people in dynasty wise to really Waffle come off of much. too much Alex Collins. I mean. Well, the one thing about this is you, the people that pretty much own Alex Collins right now and had a firm grip on him because of the way he finished last year they probably got him off the waiver wire or picked him up really cheap in a rookie draft two years ago and that uh, they, sure. they may be like oh crap maybe last year was just one of those things that happens to running backs like jeremy hill and now he ain't, ain't that great so there is a chance to go find him in a a buy low spot because they might have just be back sco- box scored. And what are you talking about buy a low spot here? I mean, nobody's giving him up for a two. Absolutely not. I mean, I, and I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go give up a first for him. I really wouldn't. Um, mm, it, it, mm, I could, Jay Wayne. I could come back to if, if if it's me. I'm going after the Buck Allen on the super cheap. Well, I mean, we'll get to that part in a second. Okay. But you give up. A, you giving up a one for Collins? Uh, I mean, in this league that I don't have, a, I need some running back help out the wazoo. Sure. All right, that's fair enough. I Who guess. am I going to get in the first round that I know they can maul over dudes like he can and catch you some balls? Maybe it didn't happen in one week. I'm not overreacting. The Ra- I'm encouraged by the Ravens' offense for sure. Kenneth Dixon picked up an injury. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go. I'll go buy him for a first. Okay, so we'll get. We really get more into our specific kick-ass trade offers on our patreon side go to ffdynasty.com and check out our patreon but if you're going to go offer a first for alex collins today i would offer the one for alex collins get back the two and give the three and go from there sure because i don't know if i don't know if you even have to have a one to get alex collins from the right guy well that's that's kind of what i was thinking but it's not two's not going to get it done two's not exactly so the two's not going to get it done you're sending the one for Alex Collins. You're asking for the two back, and the guy's going to be like, no, why would I do that? But then you give the three and maybe the three and the four, and then you start waffling. Yeah. And at the worst-case scenario, you give the one, you get Alex Collins, and then you get his three back, and maybe you give you four, and you bumped up a round for nothing. I like it. Yeah, for sure. So Still got to go with that first down to do it. Follow I, like up, the, I like the extra extracurriculars. Follow-up question. On. Short week. Obviously, we talked about it a little bit. Maybe they were arresting him. Who knows what really happened with Alex Collins there. I'm not on the sidelines. I'm not in Harbaugh's head. You start in Alex Collins week two. Bengals Thursday night. Short week. You, you roll, you're putting him in your lineup week two. If I have to, I have to. But if I don't have... If I got, a, if I got Alfred Morris... On the bench, Ooh. ready to plug in. 
going against that Colts defense, I'd be much happier doing no that. No Alfred Morris on the docket this week. Obviously, he just faced probably the best, one of the best fronts in football. Had a couple of decent runs, but we're all about firing up Alfred Morris in week well, two. When we we didn't want you to you, fire up Alfred Morris week one. When we were telling you to go get Alfred, we specifically said go. you can go spend 50% of your fab on Alfred Morris if it takes it right now to get him, but you're not buying him to go put him in the lineup against the Vikings. Right. Right. Okay, fair enough. Well, so, so I hate the I hate the road Thursday team. You got it's to just terrible. I hate the home Thursday team. I I'm trying to st- I'm trying to fade as much Thursday as I can this year. Don't love the home Thursday applicable. team, but it's still much better than the road because exactly. they have like an extra day they don't have to travel exactly. to actually prepare. Um, but that being said, I mean, where you drafted Alex Collins, he's probably your third best running back, maybe even your second one. So right. you right. probably maybe even have your first to. one. And I don't hate it. I mean, his chances for scoring a touchdown are pretty solid, I feel like. And, I mean, if you got to start him, if you got a better option, if you want to go Alfred Morris, maybe you do that. I think, well, what you said, the Thursday night thing is a, is a, is a killer. But what you said earlier to begin with is actually a really, really good point because Alex Collins didn't have to play, and they didn't play him. So it's not like he played four quarters and got beat up. Right. He is on the short week, but it's, everybody's as fresh as they can be. But you do get more punishment in week one than you do any other week because you haven't played. Right. No, even the preseason game. He's not played play. little in the preseason. Nobody plays in the preseason anymore. Even if you're playing, you don't play. So. Now you come in and you play a full game, but the Ravens didn't have to because, like Casey, we the backups were in early for the Ravens. Yeah. So maybe that's a good point. It's it, I would still fade Thursday night people as much as possible, especially the road teams. He's not road, and he didn't play a whole game last week. So maybe if you can fire up, I mean, there, you pro, there's plenty of people out there that don't have any choices, and they got to follow yeah. fire him up. I'm not saying bench Alex Collins for you know some for Joe Cohen. Schmo, for Terry Cohen for somebody that's not going to get the usage. But, I mean, maybe this fumbling it thing is an issue, and if it is going forward, we had to adjust. But right now... I think this is just, the perfect spot for the Ravens to, to punish him just for fumbling. Judging, I just I judging by the week one performance of the Bengals' defense and what they were doing, like Jordan Wilkins certainly didn't look terrible against this, this front. I think Alex Collins is a far superior player to what Jordan Wilkins is, so Absolutely. I don't have any problem firing Alex Collins up on week one, especially with limited... I like that point of saying that, you know, this is the first time you've gotten real some for real action played that long your body's a little beat up coming back in and alex collins body might be body. one of the fresher bodies especially for a guy who likes to bang like he bangs yeah. oh it's such a so, banger oh the state the, the steelers and the browns are beat up this week Ooh. yeah speaking of beat up yeah well i'm not beat up anymore <laughs> <laughs> well let's let's move on to a guy that was on our uh week one patreon waiver wire pickup list if you were a patreon member we gave you a slew of guys that should be on your radar as far as possible pickups for waiver wire ads just one of the perks of being a patreon head over to patreon.com slash the ff dynasty or you can reach it from our website the ff um but we're going to get into a little cheap buck allen yeah i think basically he was available on some waiver wires i'm sure people were dropping him maybe in maybe not in a deeper bench league right. but medium to short benches maybe he got cut at the beginning of the season short bench because you're skimming through your roster oh, we just had a rookie draft oh, yeah. i'm hang gliding no oh, i'm dead <laughs> <laughs> he, he was a, he he got he got killed off a couple of our rosters in in short bench league and and it didn't take long for you to the reason he was on the roster is because you because of the things he was because whenever last this year, damn man gets his shot yeah you, he, he does it he's doing it the, yeah. the the lesson to be learned here is stop cutting buck allen <laughs> yeah right exactly because he's just always around now you got to go and back he, and try to buy him and when he gets it on the field he's fantastic he yeah. just he's <laughs> stop awesome. cutting buck allen i love it <laughs> what's that movie that you were just quoting there where you're like oh, we're going along we're flying oh, wedding, crashers. <laughs> wedding crashers wedding <laughs> <laughs> when they start crashing funerals right. this guy got in a hang gliding accident <laughs> <laughs> oh look at me i'm hang gliding oh, oh, oh i'm dead <laughs> Oh, uh, not not as funny when you think about a hurricane. No, no. So, <laughs> Florence. cheap Buck Allen. Maybe you sending out thirds for for Buck right now. If 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 you need running back, would you trade him? a third for Buck Allen? Yeah, I'd give you a third for Buck if I needed a running back. Sure, Absolutely. I'm with you too for sure all day long. Okay. Why not? Kenneth Dixon's on IR. Let's do it. Sure. All right, well, let's get out of the Ravens. But before we go, we're gonna couple of quick responses here you buying the ravens offense in general yes, yes. or no jay wayne sure. quick yes you buying the ravens offense yes or no big cup medium Ooh. yes medium yes can't ever just give us 
That was my answer. crack, not Big Co's crack. We don't have time to say why it's a medium yes. We're just going to stick with the medium <laughs> well, yes. If it would be an absolute yes if they got to play the Bills every week. <laughs> sure. Give, give me 16 games of the Bills. I want everybody on the Ravens, including right. Joe Flacco. So, I'm I buying in. one piece on this Ravens offense, Willie Sneed, you buying him for a third? No, because he was part of the second blowout. Okay, <laughs> Willie Sneed got Not a touchdown. Looked good, blowout. five for fifty and a touch or something like that, approximately. But he was the th- he was the second blowout wide receiver. Uh, John Brown got a touchdown first, and then Crabtree does what Crabtree does and toe taps in the end zone, yeah. ridiculous catch to stay in bounds and make it count. And then Willie Sneed gets his later in the game. He was part of the third. It, I'm I wouldn't give up a third for Willie. Oh, Sneed. how Willie Sneed has fallen out of good graces with Big Co. Well, when you leave Breeze. <laughs> It's, you're probably yeah, but falling you're down on my Flacco's graces. Flacco's elite, right? Right. Yeah, that was so 2014. Third, third for Willie Sneed. I could do it for Buck Allen. I don't. I, wide receivers are much easier to come by. I don't think I need to give up a third. Don't just buy yet. second blowout wide receivers. All right. Fair uh, waiver wire ad, sure. Waiver wire ad. I mean, could be again. I'm sure he got cut off anybody's. Oh, he's probably out there. All right. Dollar. Anyhow. Dollar get out of the Ravens. Let's get into something. That was pretty interesting. They call him Joseph Mixon. Joe Mixon. And I, ha- I, own, I own no Joe Mixon. I was on the fence about Joe Mixon. He was going a little too high for my taste without seeing too much. And maybe there was a touch of bad karma <laughs> involved in that decision. Um, but Jay Wayne said it as soon as I said his name. He did look absolutely stunning. Well, when I read the stat line and i didn't see much of that game uh when i read the roto world blurb i was like well maybe you should try and sell joe mixon like in a redraft scenario because it's never going to get any easier than it just got with against the colts i don't believe maybe there are some worse off uh, defenses in the league than the colts but not probably not too many but then i went back and watched the game and saw him cutting it up and he looked like he always does. He looked phenomenal. He looked quick and powerful and decisive, and the catching was just a phenomenal, and it just it just shot out of a cannon. So, so like, well, you can't. I'm not going to take the Colts' defense and knock him at all for that. Exactly. I don't think you should sell him. I think you should be super excited about him. So in addition to... Well, you can the, knock him a little bit for the Colts' defense. Right, but in addition to the box score love, you saw him being amazing, and so... Obviously, you saw nobody else touch the ever, ball. Basically, if you've, if you've, for if the you've been playing, backfield. if you haven't been playing fantasy football for long, and you're already into dynasty, kudos to you because you're basically skipping a bunch of the bullshit and you're going straight to the good stuff. Dynasty where it's, is where it's at. But if you have been here for a while, you understand that opportunity is what you need, and touches is what makes fantasy points. And he got everything. Geo got nothing. Unless and you're then, Alvin Kamara. As soon as well, yeah. But as soon as the game is over. The coaches are like, oh, he can handle more. So he dominated the whole – everything that the running backs had going on. Like everything – I didn't necessarily I, – I didn't know how to value him either. Like Casey said, I was kind of on the fence a little bit just because he was already being drafted in that mid-second round startup, and he showed us not much last year. Even though what he did show us, I've repeatedly said, I don't see how – these people are coming out and making fun of the people that say he looked like potential Le'Veon Bell on Twitter, and they give you those slight crying, laughing, tears coming out emojis. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, those people aren't anywhere to be found. I did see him looking good last year, yeah, but he, the, Bron- the, the Bengals' offense was an explosion and in a bad way last year, right. and even though they didn't explode this week against the, the Colts' defense like we all thought they would, Joe Mixon did, and that's all you needed to see. The usage and the way he looked in combo, if you're not in on Joe Mixon now, I don't yeah. know how you would be. Well, one thing I didn't like, and I'm surprised Jay Wayne didn't mention this, is he did take a ton of hard contact. A ton. Like, there was a couple of times where I wasn't sure if he was getting up, where he, he took a decent amount of, of hard contact. And I'm usually not super against that. I kind of don't really mind it, but like it seemed like he was... Hard contact snob. Right. I mean, usually I'm not. Usually I'm like, I like I want to, finesse. I like to see that out of my guy. I like finishing runs, and but sometimes it seemed like you could have. Well, the, the, maybe it just seems like the freaking running back t- in today's NFL, when they're running towards the sideline, they can't just go out of bounds. They have to lower their head, which should be a penalty, and their shoulder. <laughs> and 
they have to initiate contact with the guy coming to force him out of bounds. Right. It's just they have to do it. I don't right. know why. I would prefer they didn't. So, but I understand it. With what Joe Mixon just did, I thought it was very impressive. Again, like Big Coast said, there wasn't a whole lot to be desired on the uh, Bengals offense last year, but in spots where there wasn't, he created a decent amount, and when he did have opportunities to do what he does, <laughs> um, he, he, was he, doing he, it. he was doing it. Um, he 17 attempts for 95 yards and a touchdown. The touchdown was a leaping effort by him. Um, and then, and what, what's notable about that touchdown is that it was like three goal line carries. Yeah, he in got a row. he got stuffed a couple times and then came back. Well, he, it was like on the eight or something. They yeah. got him down to the two or one, and they gave it to him two more times. Right. Like they didn't go away from it. They just kept feeding him on the goal line. So then, awesome. on top of that, obviously you had Tyler Eifert make it through this game. He was three for three. But other than that, Joe Mixon was second on the team in targets because I mean, really, we've been kind of talking about it all all off season. Like they don't really have anybody to throw to, which is kind of why we were. Obviously, John Ross was super cheap, but, you know, we were thinking, hey, maybe this could be a guy. Tyler Boyd for super cheap, really late on a deeper bench. Could be a guy worth a stab. He got five targets. Not not the worst, but they don't have another guy to throw it to like a Joe Mixon. Obviously, Geo could be a guy like that, but Joe Mixon's in the game. There's really not much reason to take him out. He looks awesome. Well, and, Geo is a guy like that. Right. Which exactly why it makes me say, Dang, I really wish I had some Joe Mixon. Right. Because Gio is that guy. At the end of the year last year, G- G- when Joe Mixon got hurt, Gio did what Gio did two years yeah. ago. To when start he had the his season. opportunities. Three years ago, before to get he broke run. his the fir- yeah. Three years ago, Gio's second season, before he broke his ribs, the first four or five games in the year, he was dominating fantasy football. And then he broke his ribs, and then Jeremy Hill came around the next year and all that good stuff. And it's just, but Gio can be that guy. And for the Bengals to know that, and for them to just be like, "Look at what we got in Joe Mixon," I'm, I can't. I I was kind of blown away at the usage split. So it's just, it, Gio got like nothing, zero. It was I eighteen mean, to two, I think, was the touchdown. He, has, he had one one carry and one catch. That's that's peanuts. That's, um, and Mixon was on the field for forty four snaps. That's less Gio, than a lot Gio of teams. Gio was on the field backs. for twelve. So, I mean, you know, that the disparity is there. Joe Mixon's the guy. At least it looks like week one. Um, it looks like Gio, you know, will have a little bit of a role, but it's not going to be anything to take away from what Joe Mixon's doing. Again, I don't have any Joe Mixon anywhere. It was an awesome game. So week two. Me they're, either. They're, I'm sour about it. They're coming in, and I'm, I'm definitely going to be trying to go buy Joe Mixon. You're going to have to overpay a little bit right now, but... Uh, maybe it won't be overpaying. You can get in a so little you're early. A, but you're by high. Right. You're, buying, you're about to buy so, high on Joe Mixon. But week two at home, but it's Thursday. Yep. He just came off. And he got the a, usage a, a that Alex usage, Collins did not. A decent and usage kind of guy. Maybe. A poor defense. Now they got the Ravens coming in. A right, strong defense. Right. So maybe. I'm not saying that Joe Mixon's going to be bad and you should bench him. Obviously, you got to play Joe Mixon every yeah. week from here yeah, on out just week. with the PPR floor alone. But. It could be not quite as good and just maybe not make the stock go up any further. Yeah. So maybe you could wait until after this next game to go shooting your offers for Joe Mixon. Perfect point. It's not ever going to get easy to buy Mixon again. Right. It, he would have to literally blow his knee out to get cheaper right now. And I don't even but, know if that would. Yeah, maybe not. But the yeah, it, it's not. This is go why anywhere. there was argument that he could have been the number one draft pick for last year's fantasy draft. Right. And, and one, you know, one of talent. course, yep. people backed off of that, and then everybody was kind of pretending like they didn't say it all the way through last season because it wasn't coming to fruition, but there would have been a ton of people being like, see, I told you so. Yeah, exactly. So I love what you just said because there, there is very, very small chance that the price for Joe Mixon is higher next week than it is this week. There is a likelihood, not that it's going right. to go down, sure, but it's not, it's, it's, it go like, yes, Thursday night against the Ravens. He could have 128 yards and three touchdowns. He could go back out. He could go out there and shred, but it's more than likely a better chance to get him a little bit easier. And it's not even maybe cheaper. It's just that the guy would hit accept that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, maybe even what you would have to pay for Joe Mixon a week from tonight is the same. But the guy, there's just a little more doubt or, or just less like. You can't. Oh my buy, God! Look, yes, right. you can't buy. You can't buy Alvin Kamara. You can't buy Michael Thomas. You can't buy any of the forty pointers today. And I know Joe, Joe Mixon didn't have forty, but he had thirty. Right. You know what I mean? Like you can't buy those the week after. And 
Sometimes just seems like a decent setup to maybe just wait a second. Eat, uh, yeah, just, before throwing out the even, offers for him if you want them because I want them. This is what I've been. I looked at it and I was like, this is my opinion of what I exactly how I would approach it. So there's a lot. There's a lot of trade talk comes out of my mouth, and sometimes y'all make fun of me because of the offers that I say that I would throw out. But a lot of times the offers that I do throw out are as good or better than anybody is actually getting for said player. I, I throw out acceptable offers a lot of times. Do I go fishing sometimes? Sure. But sometimes I go right for what I'm looking for. And in, in, in my eyes, I would give more. But what I threw out was actually an acceptable offer. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when I get to the point where a guy said no three times in a row to acceptable offers and I keep pushing the gas pedal and I keep throwing out to even to a point where I'm more than uncomfortable and I'm overpaying at this point and I know I'm all in and I shouldn't even do it, he still says no. And that's the position that Joe Mixon owners are in today. Right. You can offer more than retail price and they're going to say no they might say yes after a little bit less of, of an not, awesome game not awesome them. game and especially just a, maybe thursday just a good night, game right, right a thursday night everybody's spot, watching everybody could be sluggish the offensive line could come back out looking rough and that they was could be that tired. was the big you know the, the offensive line got much better from last year to this year for the Bengals. and the offensive line gets better when you play the colts sure it just happens but on paper but, they got better they drafted a center no, yeah yeah, yeah I they get brought that. in I uh what's his face from uh the, the the bills they right. brought in the bills Cordy Glenn. Go, yeah they they got better but i'm just saying you also get you get a second step of being better when you play the colts but like jay wayne said now you play on thursday night and now you're playing the ravens and an ace and a straight up division not you know rival punch you in the face so maybe next week is better for joe mix and purchase agreed all right well let's take a quick commercial break and we'll get out of here with that abbreviation you love the abreves we'll be back with more <laughs> Married to the game. There's not really any brief I could put there. MTTG. <laughs> Solid. All right. Welcome back. This will be the last segment of our show. We're going to do a little quick rapid fire. We're going to try and slay through some dudes here. If you're looking for any more in-depth analysis, be sure to hit us up on Patreon. That's where you can get any of your questions asked. We're about to go do it. Answered. A- answered. Asked and answered. Yeah, you have to ask them, then we answer them. Right, but you can ask them on Patreon, Mm -hmm. and you'll definitely get that answer. Um, We're about to do a whole Patreon show exclusively right after this free show, so head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty and uh, get... Check out that $5 holler. There's already like six and a half hours plus of exclusive content you can't find anywhere else. We did a live stream on Sunday. We answered all the sit-start questions our Patreons had. We gave you little waiver wire additions. Tons so, and tons of stuff. Yeah. Right. And by the time this month is out, it'll be about 50 cents an hour for what you paid for or for your right. uh, $5 for the month. And You're basically buying us a coffee for a bunch of fancy information. Exactly. You buy me a coffee. That's and all you got to do. it's a good time. It's a good time over there. And, and, and I've said this before. It really takes you longer to get your credit card and type it into Patreon than what it's the $5 is going to hurt you. It's a good time over there, and we had one of our guys hit us up the other day and said, thanks so much for helping me out with my Jarek McKinnon trade. We talked to one of our guys out of dropping. He had a short bench league, and he had already had his IR spot filled up. He only had two spots, and it was filled up with guys that you couldn't drop and or wouldn't have wanted to. And we got it. He traded Jarek McKinnon for a second instead of dropping him. That wasn't even part of his question. We were like, no, just trade him for a second if you can't hang yeah. on to him. All that good stuff, and just – Little things like that, just your sounding board. You're, you know, hit us up. We'll, we'll yeah. be happy to help I out. I mean, basically, we're trying to build a buddy system here. Like, we were very fortunate between the three of us to be able to, like we mentioned earlier, sit around here on Sundays and watch five TVs and talk about whatever. And and when we have, we're not playing each other, obviously, in those leagues. Um, we can answer each other's questions. Hey, what do you think about this? Hey, should I make this trade? It's just nice to be able to have somebody to bounce things off of. And we realize knowledgeable, right? We realize everyone doesn't have that situation and we're trying to be that guy. And for, you know, we're there for you, right? For your pleasure. I literally just had a trade go through and we were talking about it and we're going to get, we're going to bring that lot. That trade just happened to me 30 minutes ago. We're going to talk about that in the Patreon show to come up in case he disagreed with the trade. And that's, that's just how it goes. And that's what we want to be here for you to get. If you want to say, hey, I'm thinking about doing this trade or this trade's been offered to me, that's what we want to be to help you out with on Patreon in addition to getting, you know, extra show and all that good stuff. All right, Slay Wayne, slay some guys. All right, well, let's uh, let's get into this little bit of rapid fire. How much time you got, buddy? Not much. We'll see how quick this will actually go. Um, these are just some bullet points. I'm sure we can all chime in. Um, I think... 
from week one observations, any any rookie wide receiver that's your favorite, go send out an offer for him because everybody's rookie wide receiver's value just dropped because nobody did anything week one. I would be down to go try and put an offer in on any of your favorite dudes. I think that's a fair point, and one one of the reasons why you know multiple times over multiple seasons we tell you that we will hammer rookie running backs because they pay dividends. You know, usually quicker. a little quicker. I don't mind when guys like a Corey Davis or something that like that, where I feel very strongly about his ability, come around and, sure. and being able to stab at those guys in the first round or whatever. But for the most part, I might take a running back who I maybe don't love quite as much as the receiver over him because it's just you could get dividends a lot quicker. Um, so again, week one, not super surprising. A la Royce Freeman and can carry on Johnson love that's come around right. in the last couple months over some of those other receivers. And then here you go. Week one, nothing happens for the receivers. And now that running backs are popular. Yeah. It's out there for everybody. But two years ago, we were right. over here telling you about these running backs and how they, they, they make you the, they make you the champs. Yeah. All right. Um, looking at some box scores and some games, Kareem hunt got you less than five PPR points. So I know you're bummed about Kareem Hunt. Right. Uh, and he it, still touched the ball 16 times, and this is the first game he ever didn't have a catch in. I'd be willing to go. I'd be down to try and go buy some cheaper Kareem Hunt coming off of a bad week here. Well, and I'll piggyback that with uh, Leonard Fournette as well because I think both of those guys are guys who are people are either very in or very out on, and you may have just got them on your team because they were the guy left. Right. And maybe somebody's already like, well, see, I told you so. This I, the, the, they're he's not any good he's not any good or he's hurt or what you know whatever but this is you know you're not going to be able to buy him for peanuts obviously the four net and the hunt no, but for sure you could definitely send some things and if and instead of just getting the automatic reject that you're getting for joe mixon you might actually get some sort of a response well there's two that well Yes and yes, but the I love both of these guys. So you're Leonard, not getting Leonard from Fournette me, has the inner injury thing, and Kareem Hunt just has the. They just blew out. They just put up 38 points, and he only got four four points, 4.9 PPR points. But the thing about it is, only one guy out. Everybody on the Chiefs team had one catch, except right. for Sammy Watkins had three, and then Tyreek Hill had seven. Right for a buck 69 and a punt. Kelsey return. killed you. And, yeah, Kelsey killed you too. So, like in a game where the Chiefs it's a punt return and a, two huge plays from Tyreek. That's my, my, exactly what I was about to say. Like you get your first possession taken away from you by Tyreek Hill's punt return for to the house to start the game, and then I think it was maybe the very next, maybe maybe two possessions later, Tyreek takes the slant or the deep deep cross. Boom! Hit him in stride. Outruns everybody to the house. So like throws up the deuces. The, you know what can you do offensively? It's like you, yeah, you put up thirty eight points. And you're like looking around for the fantasy points, but Tyreek Hill got them all. Right. You know, so and that's I'm not, not going to happen every week. I, I would definitely put out a flyer on somebody looking to 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 back off Kareem Hunt a little bit because I'm just like Jay Wayne said. Never had not had a catch before. It's not like Spencer Ware came in there and gobbled up seven targets. Right. He caught one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Nobody did anything outside of Tyreek Hill. That's it. Right. Right. All right. Let's move on. Another guy in the same exact scenario. Well, not quite. He had a better game than Kareem Hunt had. Shocking. But we got Dalvin Cook, who only got you 13 and a half PPR points. A lot of people were down on him coming into the initial start of this season because Latavius Murray earned more carries and he's coming off this injury and he's not going to see as much. They're going to split carries and all this. Well, I'm here to tell you he played 80% of the snaps this week. He had 16 carries and what was it five targets? He had seven targets for caught six of them for 55 yards. Right. So I this is another guy who could have had a much bigger day. I love seeing the workload. Second on the team in him. targets. Right. Second on the team in yardage. And played 80% of the snaps. So it's only going up for the Vikings offense. Uh, you didn't see a ton from them in the preseason. You didn't see anything from Dalvin Cook in the preseason. Right. I guess he carried the ball like once Niners or twice. defense, possibly a better against the run than some people thought. Underrated Absolutely. for sure. Um, um, Latavius Murray played fine in this game. He got 11 carries for 42 yards. He, he played well. Um, but, but Dalvin, it was all Dalvin Cook to right, get going, right? And they opened up, and the and the 49ers kind of made a little bit of a comeback. They opened it up on them for a minute. The Vikings being yeah. the Vikings, and you, Dalvin fumbled twice. As your Dalvin ownership going into the first week, 
it was all you could hear was Latavius split the load, Latavius yeah. goal line, Latavius. So you had Latvius, to, Latvius, Latvius. everything you heard was 50 50. And to start that game, it was 80 20. Right. And that's and all then you on top to of see. that, you saw the crazy usage in the passing game, which I don't think is going anywhere. Right. No. And, and he had a huge that's run. That's a cherry on top for me. And he fumbled it. Yeah. And so 13 points, like that's a terrible game almost for him. Right. right. Which is Good why I'm you. saying go send out some feelers. And then when you watch the game, it doesn't really look like 13. When you were watching that game, it didn't seem like he had 13 points. He played better than the right. point total, like I more. thought. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If there's any, yeah, yeah. If there's any slight hiccup in a Dalvin Cook owner's mind, be ready to pounce on that. Do you can't it. make the trade if you don't make the offer, if it, p- people. Sure. So this next guy on our list is is a bit of a question. Are you selling or are you holding Randall Cobb? He had crushed it for nine, n- caught nine of ten targets for 142 yards. Obviously, that huge 75-yard touchdown reception to win the game. Well, Aaron Rodgers is dealing with a knee injury. You got Cobb for cheap. Are, are you cashing the register here or are you selling? I'm you kinda, buying? I'm kind of torn on this because... You're Obviously, hey, you're not buying. You're holding or selling? Well, you, you can't... I don't, nobody's going to... I'm not the buying guy on this end of this... Th- spectrum of Randall right. Cobb here so that's right. out well but um with the 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 Aaron Rodgers injury is the thing that that would make me want to maybe explore selling Randall Cobb because a he hasn't been the healthiest guy and without Rodgers we've seen this charade before there's one guy that kind of did the did his thing and maybe the Cobb would be the guy who did his thing in here but I don't know if I'm willing to you know roll that dice I just think that you got him for so cheap that I would be okay with riding this out if Aaron Rodgers was healthy. So, but yeah, well, there, yeah, the I think thing, I'm willing to sell if I somebody's think, willing to buy. But I don't know what the I don't think the market's going to bear much. If if Aaron Rodgers can go without getting further hurt, I think the quick ball coming out is a very good thing for sure. For Randall Cobb, you saw point. you saw the second half targets for Randall Cobb spike. Obviously, he takes one to the house from far away. That'll give you PPR points right there. That'll get you fantasy point fantasy points in any league. But the thing about the buy sell on, on on Randall Cobb right now that makes this kind of an unusual situation. You don't like we just said you don't buy guys after thirty and 30, 40 point weeks. But the Randall Cobb owner was shaking in his boots last week. Right, a lot oh, of people getting, may have not even started him. No, oh, oh, definitely on some benches for sure. But he was also like, oh my god, he's about to get cut or traded away from yeah. Aaron Rodgers. Oh my god, and now. So it's an unusual situation because not a lot of guys are about to get traded slash maybe that's the cut about to be cut sign and then they get 30 points. So there actually could be a buy low on on Randall Cobb because it's higher than they thought they were going to get. And I know that sounds funky, but if you, you see what I'm saying, like if, a week ago, you couldn't have got anything from Randall Cobb because he was about to get traded away from Aaron Rodgers and you don't even know. Yeah, he's always been nicked up. He's always been hurt. But when he's in there, he's one of my favorite guys. To, if if Aaron Rodgers and, and, and Randall Cobb are healthy together, they make fantasy magic. Yeah. So And they did it again this week. And they might do it again next week. And then they might one of them might get hurt or, or worse. You yeah. know, So it's a slippery slope with Randall Cobb. For, it is a, it, I know it's supposed to be fast. So if I got him... I'm trying to put him in my lineup as long as it ha- as it as it helps. I doubt anybody's going to give me anything for that's him. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that, I don't that was kind of go- my. I don't think the market's going to bear very much. I don't even think though you're going to be. Able to get, I think yeah. people are. It's one week, and people are going to be nobody's like, yeah, gonna, "I don't yeah. want anything." Nobody, yeah, I'm not, like I'm not going to give. You, I'll keep my. I'll keep your third, and I'll just keep putting him in my lineup. Exactly. Nobody's going to give anything for him, but at the same time, if I feel like I need some PPR points, that it's on a roller coaster and it may go down as fast as it came up, I'd give up a third to put Randall Cobb in my roster for a couple of weeks. Or maybe the rest, of, you don't know how long before he gets yeah, hurt. I'm out on buying him. Personally. I could buy him for cheap. I mean, I guess for a third. I don't think anyone's going to give him to you for a third after you just put up a 30 burger. But That's what maybe, I'm saying. Maybe I, mean, it does, it, I don't think it would happen with anybody else that scored to put those, that amount of points. But just last week, they didn't think, they thought it was a sinking ship. Fair yeah. enough. That's fair. Um, I'd be down to hold or or maybe buy for a third. I mean, I, I, I'd hold. Let's see what happens. I mean,. It's Aaron Rodgers maybe maybe holding on by a string with his health. That's that's why I'm concerned. Yeah, that's, he didn't look fair. right at the end of that game, and it just takes one. You're already would out, you, out you, on collarbone, you, Aaron Rodgers, let alone hanging on by a thread knee, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> <laughs> and about to play the Vikings bad knee. <laughs> yeah, like you are can't you? Start uh, him. Yeah. Would you would you trade him away for a third? No. Like I, got, right. I just said, like, I can't trade him away because I'm just going to roster him until the wheels. It's going to be one of these deals where I got to roster it till the wheels fall off and then just be like, well, it was a good run with Cobb again. Right. 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 All right. Uh, let's move on to another guy who 
Let's see, his team already put two other wide receivers on IR in Trey Quinn and Cam Sims. Not that they were making a huge impact. Jamison Crowder was a guy we would all we all had our eye on in the preseason. He picked up some groin injury, and we were all con- didn't see kinda, him a lot. Kind of concerned about that. Didn't it looked see like him, deja vu, right? And then he gets out there and he plays in week one, and he looks healthy, which right. I think is the main point to take away. Looked healthy, ran around, looked good. The Redskins didn't need to do anything in this game. They had a hold of it. Twenty-one point second quarter. They did what they did. The defense was manhandling the other team's offense. The the Cardinals' offense. Uh, P, uh, AP looked good, uh, and they just they didn't really need to do too too much. Don't get don't get too crazy. I mean, I don't have the box score in front of me, but I mean, I don't think anybody caught more than a couple balls outside of when they needed something. It was Chris Thompson, and they either handed it to him I and think he, he, he did the some most. stuff. He had six catches. I think that was the most on the team. Jordan Reed had four, and it really wasn't a whole lot after that. It was a couple to uh, Paulie and. Paul called a couple, and, and, and Crowder didn't catch many. Crowder caught three. P. Rich, I think, had six targets, but didn't have that many. Uh, but like you said, they did. They came out and exploded on the Cardinals, and we knew the Cardinals were going to have some some issues with the r- lack of weapons right. outside of outside of the main two guys with DJ and, and Larry, and that that's ex- precisely what happened. And, and Casey has been leading the charge on this all offseason long about how – the Redskins are a lot better than people think they are. Right. And they, they had some really, they really... got a decent offensive line. They got a good had, front seven. That's exactly. They had a really tough... De- they had a really, really tough deal with injuries last year. And they came they came into this game a lot healthier than they were, than they have been. And they beat them up. And then you saw it like Jordan Reed disappeared after that in the second half. They didn't need him. And... And one of the things that they Casey's, hoodooed us with Chris Thompson saying that he wasn't oh, right, and then now he looks great. That's again. That's my. That's he my, hoodooed us. He that's said I, he doesn't right. feel good. That's my biggest. Like, I guess in a, even in a dynasty format, we did say earlier in the off season, like long term hold didn't go with Chris Thompson, and I stand by that. So in my dynasty startup this year. I wasn't going to pay what they paid for him anyway, so I don't regret that part. But recently, actually, we put out the video of an auction that we did, and Chris Thompson went for six bucks. And when his name come up, I was like, ah, whatever, you know. And I feel bad. I feel like we could have got him for seven dollars. We missed the boat and redraft for we, sure. We missed the boat and redraft because yes, he said I'm not going to be right. And I, that was I really hung on that. If the dude is personally doubting himself, I just didn't see it. Coming. I didn't. I didn't like it either. But you, he that the redraft thing we should have got on because it's so it was he was he was too cheap number one in redraft and when he's out on the field and healthy he's been awesome and you just ride that wave as long as you can ride it and you find some other option because when he's in there in your redraft or your dynasty right now like you're you're probably winning ball games you're happy to start them right and Absolutely. I definitely missed on that one. So buy low on Crowder. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> He's healthy. They didn't have to do too much. I think moving forward he'll he'll be a lot better uh in your lineup than three for thirty. Absolutely. Uh let's move on to the Seahawks. Tyler Lockett had a fifty one yard touchdown uh catch. Didn't do a ton outside of that. Brandon Marshall saw six targets, caught four of which of them uh which which of these two guys would you rather have moving forward, Tyler Lockett or Brandon Marshall? Well, this is easy in a dynasty to say. Well, Brandon Marshall's thirty four years old, but let me just say I'd rather have Brandon Marshall in my lineup next week. Right. I'd like I'd like the Tyler I like the Tyler Lockett story. I like he got a gruesome knee injury and he came back last year and everybody said he wasn't any good at football anymore and he just came back from having his leg torn off. And now this year, week one, he breaks behind a defense and makes him look like Tyler behind, Lockett again. Got behind Chris Harris. That's what I'm saying. Like I, I would much rather the vaunted have, Chris Harris. You, you can't, you can't want Brandon Marshall more than Tyler Lockett in Dynasty because B Marsh is, you know, he's he's retireable. He's 34, but he didn't look 34. No, he looks spry. That's exactly wow, why wow. I told you a couple weeks ago that when I heard one of the nation, you know, one of the the biggest guys in the industry called him so washed, completely and he's terrible. So, he said a lot com- of people were saying that. He for said no, ridiculous. Forget, they said forget about Aaron forget about b marsh and i came right on here and said hey man this is not you can't forget about b marsh he's a he's an absolute stud and that thing some people get hurt he was beat up in new york and the whole team quit last year yeah it just wasn't right he comes in he looks good week one he catches a touchdown had another one call back for penalty it was yeah. his offensive pass interference he pushed off on a guy but I would I would I would feel really good with B Marsh in my lineup next yeah. week. Yeah, you move your lips like a bunch of gibberish. People think that you forgot about Dre <laughs> <laughs> or B Marsh, whatever you want to do. 
That's an Eminem song. Way back in the day, Big yeah, Coda was listening to rap. That. I ain't going to get that one. Forgot about B Marsh. <laughs> this is what I've. Anyhow. Delicious. <laughs> a bunch of gibberish. <laughs> Mother. Exactly. Like they forgot about B Marsh. <laughs> I, I agree with you. I, I, I want B Marsh in my lineup next week. Tyler Lockett was too cheap in a lot of Dynasty startups to pass up on, so. We do. We had, we did acquire him in in a couple of leagues. We got some locket. Oh, it's a like fifth round rookie draft and, pickup. And the fact of the matter is, is again, B Marsh probably got cut off of a lot of teams last year, so he was waiver wire material in this first go round. So probably not Tyler Lockett, though. I would say Tyler Lockett was probably not a, he's, he's or as a, much on the waiver wire as B Marsh. So the pickup for B Marsh and the startability of B Marsh in Dynasty is is awesome right now. I think it is because Tyler Lockett's not on any of my six. What is it? Seven, six or seven FFPC leagues, which are twenty man rosters with including a kicker, defense, and quarterback at all times. Like so, that's seventeen players at a at a max. So uh, you, we have Tyler Lockett and FFPC. No, no, he's not on any waiver wires. Oh, oh. And did uh, I say right. he's not on my team? I think so. I thought you did, but well, if I say, he's on some of our teams, he's not on any waiver wires, and B Marsh is. And last yeah. week we told you about B Marsh. You, you could have got him for free, and I think this year, this week, you're still going to get him for really, really cheap. Right. There's probably some people who are still not. And with believers. Doug, did we, did anybody did did I, did I space out? Did we say that? Did you say anything about the hurt? best receiver on the team's Doug hurt Baldwin. With the Doug we Baldwin's out for him. a couple of weeks like did did that even come out because that's huge right. yeah, well it's understood when you bring up these other guys I mean obviously we were if you've listened to this show we've been huge proponents of Doug Baldwin for years now and we tried to stand fast with his left knee injury throughout the preseason saying that you know we're still down with taking an 85 90 percent Doug Baldwin because he's still a value no matter what how you ring it up then he goes and picks up a right knee injury in this first game. He's going to be out at least Probably two Probably overcompensating. Weeks. Yeah, right. That's what I thought as soon as it happened. Like a guy with a big truck um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, or surfboard or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but Maybe they just have small waves with the he's, surfboard. He's going to have two to two to four week injury timetable. Obviously, the Seahawks came out and said it's only going to be two weeks, but they always lie about injuries. So it's, it's probably going to be longer than two weeks, at least two weeks. So in the immediate future... B Marsh and Tyler Lockett, I think are solid plays in your lineup, and and B Marsh is probably a guy you could pick up for, on the cheap, and I'd be a proponent of that because he definitely did not look like a thirty four year old wide receiver. And if you were listening to Patreon, I believe it was last episode, I I gave you a little Will Disley. So yep, answer B Marsh. Yeah. Anyhow, right. well, real quick, let's just sum up the uh, Jets offense. Sam Darnold's definitely going to the Hall of Fame, right? Give yeah, him the, give him the sure. Give, give him the gold, the gold jacket. jacket. <laughs> give him the gold jacket. I want to say green jacket, but this isn't the Masters. Nope. Um, obviously, they them boys came out and stopped the Lions. We're going to get into the Lions here in a second. We're going to talk about Galladay and Marvin Jones being left for dead, what to do with Galladay, what to pay for him. Talk about this Lions offense in general on the Patreon show amongst the uh, Broncos backfield situation with Lindsey and Royce Freeman amongst many other listener questions that they have. We're going to, we're going to answer all those on, on the, the Patreons. Patreon show. So be sure to get your $5 holler in as soon as you can to but become I'm, part of that family and get those questions answered. Absolutely. It's notable. Robbie Anderson had one catch 41 yards and a touchdown. He, you could t- you could see him getting frustrated throughout that game because he wasn't getting targeted. And he was getting open. And he was open, and Darnold wasn't looking his way, and then he finally threw it up, lobbed it up. wasn't the best throw. Robbie made a, a, a great catch on that yeah. touchdown catch. Solid for your Robbie Anderson stock. I thought Bilal Powell and Crowell looked pretty solid. Obviously, Crowell had a huge day. From- I thought both of them looked like they were coming out there, and they looked extremely quick. And they look like they were very powerful, ready to finish every run and being elusive. They just obviously it's the Lions defense didn't look great in general, but both of those running backs I thought looked really good in this. They just look both of them look shot out of a cannon and they were finishing a lot of runs with power. And I, I liked what I saw from from Crowell and, and Powell here. Yeah, maybe if you were in the building, the nail is in the coffin already, but watching on TV that when Crowell took the corner and took it down the sidelines, that was a nail in the coffin. Obviously, you hadn't, you didn't think Crowell was that fast. I'm a Lions fan, and they just they took they took our pants off in public. They <laughs> they took our pants off, pointed at the skinny dick, and laughed. Skinny, <laughs> you drive a big truck with a diesel engine. You got a small dick with a jacked up truck. Big Co drives plenty of diesel trucks. There's nothing wrong with the diesel, unless you don't need it. 
Well, you always need it. You don't know that you need it until you get it, and then you're like, "Oh, this is way better." Than well, actually if you're burning. pull, if you're pulling equipment, this is yeah. way better than burning. I'm gas. all for the diesel. If not, yeah, get out of here. Yeah. And if you got your truck jacked up, if you use it jacked up, like what? You, I, like how? Like off like, roading? Yeah, going okay. mud. Well, that's fine. I mean, I grew up going mud, and I was a, the best mud and driver in our town. <laughs> of course, were you, I, a mud, were you a mudder? I was a mudder. <laughs> I was a mutter. We had this pipeline that can, at the edge of my property, and after school and co- after high school, we'd have all these mudding trucks lined up, and we'd all go out in the country and ride up and down this pipeline in the mud, and people would get stuck. And the mudding pull. pipeline. These boys would get their trucks jacked up with new tires, and then they'd ask me to drive it through the pipeline for them. And I'm like, go get your own truck stuck. This is like this is like pipeline at Hawaii, but this is cam <laughs> pipeline in Hawaii and cammed in South Carolina. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, speaking of jacked up. When I read that Quincy Inunua only had 10 targets, I was like, whoa, it seemed like way more, right? He was the offense. So That's, That was Sammy Hall of Famer's go-to. Almost, ha- almost half of uh, HOF Sam, almost half of his targets went to Quincy. He had a 48% target share, <laughs> which is massive. We've been on this guy for so long, whether you go back two years on SoundCloud or... Even just days uh, last off season, we told you to pick up Quincy Inunua. We we're like, he's cheap, he's good. Pick no him reason up. not to have him. Right. Cheap and good, love those. And then we told you this off season in our uh, our draft, our our auction, or it was the uh, mock draft startup. We're like, you got to you got to take Quincy. There's no reason not to take Quincy. And then he hurt his back. Um, I guess that was before this off season, right? He hurt his back. Last off season, we were before on and before then. I just want to do some. I'm 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 not nailing this bat packing here. Uh, <laughs> but doing a really bad on, job of saying how great you are. We've been on Quincy for a long time, and we didn't let the back injury slash neck injury fall f- falter us. Uh, we we were on him again this off season, and he was just catching everything out there. Balls behind him, off target throws. He was taking shots over the middle, holding on to it. He was just getting bludgeoned with targets. And well, Old it was Sammy a safety blanket. A, it was a neck injury, which that, that that glows in red. But that's when we were doing the mock startups, and we kept taking Quincy and Noon while late because he was there late. Right. And it's like I don't care if his neck falls off first week. We didn't. You're not paying anything for him right now. Right. But and you then, had to get him on your but team. But you're supposed to get him when he's free, and he was free in your startups this year. And I'm talking like 15th, 16th, 17th round. And if he has no neck, you're okay. You replace him. But guess what? He's got a neck. And he's got 20 PPR right. points for you. And Sam Hoff Darnold, he <laughs> is That's going, an abbreviation for Hall of Fame. Right? Way to put it out there. He's going to keep pumping these targets to well, Inunua. This, this offense, this Jeremy Bates offense, is a lot of short, quick throws. Inunua and fits right into the there. The beauty he's of it built is like a, got like a, a running back and or tight end with great hands. All of those. And you got, Big body. You got two capable running backs stress, stressing the defense out. And you got Robbie Anderson, who's one of the fastest wide receivers right. in the now, league. No, who no, can actually catch. No Jermaine Curse in this contest, who was their leading receiver, I believe, last year. And they still have Pryor out there, who's a big, big fella. Yeah, but um, Curse caught is, three for forty nine. Huh? Curse, Curse, Curse is not going to come in there and take away from the Nunwa wide receiver slash tight end combo. Nah. Like a Nunwa is the middle of the field. Like He's, Curse is good. Curse and Curse was actually very underrated for what he did last year. I thought he was, but I I think if anything, a Nunwa keeps his tar. Uh, it's not going to be forty eight percent every game, right? But it sure is. It could be more targets going around, right. and he still gets his ten. And Sam Sam Darnold only had like twenty one attempts, but to to his credit, the defense scored. Right, they took possessions away from the offense. And by the last the last fifteen minutes of the game, there needed to be no targets. Right, and so with Quincy, he's just that big body in the middle of the field, crushing contested catches, yards after the catch. He's just always open. He's got that, so that late that touchdown. separation. He ran ran around, tucked his way into the end zone, reached it out, got the looked ve- I swear, unstoppable. I, I he was texted, not going to be denied. I texted Casey as soon as that happened, and I was like, I can't believe how quick he looked. He's like, he's huge, sturdy, thick man. That's why he's playing the tight end combination here, and he can be across the middle and take hits from linebackers. But then when he caught that ball and he had a step, he took it, and he was he got in the end zone, not like most 225, 230 right. pound men. Huge, sturdy. And thick, just like my dad. <laughs> yeah, skinny. <laughs> Jay Wayne has a big old jacked up Jeep. <laughs> 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 uh, 
It's not jacked up. Skinny, it came like that. Skinny wiener. Skinny. It is bright yellow, though. <laughs> it's because I'm happy. <laughs> All right. Well, we I'm were gonna get into some. Bad. We were gonna get into some lines here, uh, right before our patri- transition Let's into Patreon. Take it to Patreon. But we're already we're out deep of into this thing. We're, we're out, out of time. time. Just so just close up shop here. Thanks for listening, everyone. If you want, so we're about to. We're just getting rolling here. If you can tell, we're about to kick it over to the Patreon. We show. already got a pipeline mudding story in. <laughs> Gets better. Just primed up, big, thick, and hard. Just like <laughs> whoa, whoa. We should have quit seeing Nunez catching ability. Uh, physique. We're on any of your platforms of choice: Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio. Most importantly, iTunes. Please go onto iTunes and go hit that review tab and give us a little five star tap. You don't have to write anything. You can if you'd like. It's always entertaining hearing from you guys. And thank you to everyone that's already done so. If you don't, if you listen to the show and you like what you're hearing, please go onto YouTube and just hit subscribe for us. Let's get that little subscription, even if you're not listening to videos. But we've been doing some live streams, which have been Patreon exclusive only. But we might make some of them public. So anytime we go live publicly on youtube you'll get a notification if you're subscribed so just another for show another reason to do that um if you're looking for some more content you can't find anywhere else go over to patreon give us that five dollar holler patreon.com slash the ff dynasty the ff dynasty.com has a, a link straight to there from our home page as well and if you're not in if you're not ready to pull out the, the, the credit card and buy us a coffee for all this awesome information we're giving you you can head over to our website theffdynasty.com slash community we have a forum set up there and you can ask any of your questions you want on there and get interaction from other people in the family and we try to stay active on there as well so that's another avenue for you to pursue to get some interaction with us hit us up on twitter at the ff dynasty at imc myers at dynasty big co at jay wayne's world Till next time, you've been listening to the FF Dynasties Married to the Game. Mm. All the syllables.